what's up everybody, my name is Trofinet and welcome to Bioshock 2, the sequel of course to uh, the original Bioshock and uh, in the eyes of many people a worse game. I wouldn't go so far as to say that, of course the original Bioshock was a lot to live up to, but uh, Bioshock 2 had its own really really good ideas as you will uh, come to see in, the, in this series. This is also a Let's Replay series, so uh, that means that I played this Quite a bit, I think I, I played it a lot less than the original Bioshock, but uh, I did go through it a few times. As always, I'm gonna do my very best to, go, to be as thorough as I can when we go through these games, trying to explain as much as I can about the game, uh, maybe talk a bit about the backstory uh, which goes on in this game, because this game as well has a pretty good story. It's a bit less intriguing than the original one, but uh, that's enough from me, let's go straight in. Okay, so new game, uh, we're gonna go for a hard again, there is no higher difficulty in this game, apparently, that, I kind of forgot about that, apparently. You've played a lot of shooters, uh, I know what this game is about, we played the original Bioshock on hard, so we'll not go uh, lower in Bioshock 2, so here we go. I've kept the introduction uh, short on purpose, because I don't want to spoil too much about this game beforehand. So 1958, uh, if you remember, the previous game started out at uh, a lot later, I think it was 1964. And the day that everything went wrong in Rapture was actually 1959, New Year's Eve of 1958. So this is actually before everything went to hell. And as you can clearly see, we're in the body of a big daddy. Grabbing ourselves a little sister out of the vent. Let's go out to play, Daddy. So yes, because in Bioshock 2 we actually play as a big daddy and a special one, as you can see, because this one doesn't look... We don't look like uh, any of the big daddies we've seen before. So that's Andrew Ryan over there on the screen. So this is, as, as I said before, before everything went to shit. But even then, there were corpses lying around for the little sisters to uh, drain of uh, Adam. Mm. <laughs> More angels, Daddy! This way! And she clearly can uh, smell the corpses. Now she runs off, and we go through a uh, brightly lit room, which is uh, currently <gasps> having a party, apparently. But where oh, and she seems to be in trouble. Few splicers uh, trying to attack her. Ooh, but of course, this time we're a bit stronger. Electro bolt in our face. Not that that's gonna uh, take us out permanently, of course. And of course, one of the greatest things about this game is that, of course, we're gonna have control over that drill in a minute. So he takes them out easily. Aside from that uh, fast one, but you might recognize that plasmid he just used, because that was the uh, hypnotized Big Daddy plasmid. This is not your daughter. Do you understand? Her name is Eleanor, and she is mine. Now, kneel, please. Since we're under the influence of that plasmid, remove your helmet. We're gonna do whatever she says. And this is also a very interesting detail. We can actually remove now, our helmet. Take the pistol. Place it against your head. And Eleanor looks in disgust, in fear. <laughs> and we commit suicide. Well, that's a special way to start a game, isn't it? Ten years later, ten full years later. So that means we're uh, past the uh, previous game right now. Hello, can you hear me? 
And that might have sound, sounded a bit familiar as well, the voice we just heard, but it appears 10 years later, we're alive. And we're still at the Adonis Luxury Resort. And we can hear little sister. We're gonna change a few settings. There we go, changed uh, some audio settings, inverted my, uh, my look and uh, enabled subtitles for any future thingies. So Fallen, Fallen is Babylon. Uh, I might want to tell you something else about the fact that we could remove our helmet. In the previous game, it was stated then that uh, the Big Daddy suits were grafted, uh, while the organs of the user were grafted into the suit, uh, disallowing them from uh, removing even one part of that suit. But we clearly could, indicating that we might be a different kind of Big Daddy. Um, I'm also going to tell you, uh, I could change the HUD, and that I could change the uh, the frame, so you don't have in the corners those... Uh, those helmet frames. If you're if you're annoyed by that, let me know in the comment section, and I can remove that. But I think I kind of like it right now. It's not as constricting as uh, in the end of uh, Bioshock One. So we were revived at the Vita Chamber. So the same things that were uh, resurrecting us in the previous game. That was kind of weird, since normally they were only set to Andrew Ryan and the, his uh, genetic makeup, but. Fallen, Fallen is Babylon, and then a memorial wall of a lot of uh, people that have clearly gone missing or died. Uh, we have a melee attack, so we can use the drill, that's the only thing we have instead of the, uh, the wrench from the previous game. And yeah, let's take a look around, because uh, we don't really know how we got back to life. What can I actually do with this thing? Can I do anything else? No, okay. I can smash and I can drill if I keep it uh, on. So, Adonis Luxury Resort. And I can smash through. Nope, okay. Yeah, yeah there we go. Let's move that out of the way. Of course, uh, basic tutorial stuff. I can crouch. There we go. And then there we have the shadow of a little sister passing by. Let's see if we can't uh, find her. So Adonis is a Rapture's finest spa and getaway. And there is something we haven't seen before. So that was a creature we haven't met before. Already making this a lot more interesting. Plasma therapies, that sounds good if you want to have uh, some uh, powers. Because we don't have any plasmid powers right now. That might actually change. There seems to be a audio diary right here attention workers so let's listen to that our first audio diary of the game lesson one mob jockeys you are under the ocean now if you feel the soft patter of rain on your hat you're already fired lesson two you can jump start a dead generator with a direct spark but clear the guests out of the pool first scares these rich pricks to watch a work and stiff hurling thunderbolts. You follow me? So Big Kate O'Malley was clearly the uh, the foreman of this place, the leader of, uh, of the workers here. And uh, she kind of gave us a hint if the generator broke down, we can kickstart it with Electro Bolt. Um, there's also something interesting written on the floor here. Lamb is watching. I kind of forgot to tell to talk a bit about the scene that we just witnessed, so the scene where we shot ourselves in the head. Uh, the woman we saw was Sophia Lamb, and is actually the uh, primary antagonist of this game. Uh, so Lamb is watching, watching is referring to Sophia herself. And uh, she claimed that the little sister we were uh, walking around with, Eleanor, is her daughter. I actually have this poster on my, on my wall here. Actually funny, I have that because uh, these were included in the uh, collector's edition when you bought that originally. Do you hear me? And uh, now we hear another splicer, well our first splicer, I say another splicer, but our first splicer of the game. So throwing away some cans. And uh, now we have a locked door over there. And she was killed. And we're gonna kill this guy by drilling in his face. Yeah, he, he didn't ch stand a chance. So, invigorating, electrifying, uh, electrobolt uh, material, well, commercial materials. 
Let's check out this place as well. Doesn't look like we can get in, except apparently someone died in there and I left a code in the steam on the door. So 1540. Let's enter that. 1540. And you can also already see a difference in uh, the previous game. Regarding the previous game, we now get the codes if we, uh, we don't need to remember them anymore because uh, they are located on the right there now. Well, of course, only if you check that out. So, corpse, a few dollars and a few bandages. Let's pick up the dollars and drill fuel. Because as you can see on the left, if we want to use the spinning attack, we need to uh, spend some fuel to do so. Fitness. My husband is such a perfect idiot. Throws away all his spending money on gene tonics to affect a look of physical fitness. So he'll have an excuse to sit on his rear all day listening to radio serials. Steven, I tell him, you want to be fit? Come swim laps with me, the old-fashioned way. It's your mind that's atrophying. Maybe I'll start sneaking some brain boost into his daily regimen. So there we go, just uh, plainly indicating how common all these uh, genetic modifications were, because she talks about it like it's uh, not a big deal to uh, change your uh, brain capacity or your uh, fitness. So I think I checked, oh, no, I didn't check this guy out. So another health kit. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, Bioshock 2 is also different in the way health works. Uh, I don't think we can carry as much first aid kits, but I'm also pretty sure that you don't need to apply them yourself anymore. If I'm not mistaken, could be wrong on that accord. So Lam is watching again, and a picture of her surrounded by butterflies. Uh, plasmids, just indicating, I think that's even an asset from the previous game, uh, indicating that over there is gonna be our first plasmid and fitting, um, same as with the previous game, our first plasmid is gonna be electrobol. Just gonna quickly check this out, I don't think, oh I can use it already. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna grab some more Eve hypos then. So that's great, let's take a look, oh! And there we have uh, a flash of a girl. Well, the subtitles kind of gave it away, of course, but that's the same little sister that we were walking around with from Eleanor, a gift from Eleanor. With the uh, crayons on the wall, please hurry, daddy. She still calls her us father, even though Lamb told us we're not her father, probably. Not that we should trust that woman. So, Electrobolt, to take the plasmid. And uh, this guy knows what he's doing instead of what that because he even has a slot to uh, insert these in indicating that he was actually uh, used to having access to plasmids which is also different from the original big daddies there we go and there's another little sister daddy was sleeping for such a long time and eleanor has missed you find her and you'll be all better Okay then, thank you. And there we have that thing again. Okay. So now we have Electro Bolt. We can fire the Bolt of Electricity. And well, that thing just took away that little sister. Uh, another big difference, as you might have noticed already, in regards to the previous game, is that we can use plasmids and normal weapons at the same time, which is amazing. I really like that. So uh, this kind of indicates that the little sister set this up and Eleanor has some kind of connection to the little sisters, allowing them to, uh, well, perform her tasks. Uh, we have a few treatment rooms to the side here as well, before we go back to where we, uh, where we came from. Uh, quick look around. I do love the way this, uh, this place is looking right now, since we're uh, five years further, so the sea life has seeped in a bit more than in the previous, uh, well, than five years ago. So that gave them a good excuse to uh, paint this lovely picture here. Ooh, a charred corpse. Anything on her? Apparently not. Cigarettes are still bad for you. Not that I know how this guy would actually use cigarettes with his helmet on. Um, let's take a look. Okay. There's nothing else here. I think I can use that Eve dispenser again to uh, fill up on Eve hypos. I think I can use that actually a few times. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's the last one because I think there's one near the door as well. 
yeah right over here let's take that as well and zap the door I saw them open. And this is the introduction to the one-two punch that we can do with uh, this guy as well. There we go. Down the pool. Oh. There we go. Just take them out. Uh, he also reloads really coolly. He just makes a fist and that automatically uses one of the uh, Eve hypos we uh, have in store. So, let's zap this thing. And we start the generator to uh, turn the lights back on. And we actually did this to open that door over there because we couldn't access it otherwise. Um, there we go. And now we have the familiar last, voice. A signal. You who are bringing this dead city to life, listen. My name, it is Tannenbaum. I know who you are. And I am in much need of your help. Please. Find me in the Atlantic Express train station. So five years after we rescued her together with the little sisters from uh, Rapture, Tannenbaum is apparently back in Rapture. Uh, and she has a pretty good reason to do that. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna, gonna just take this guy's uh, stuff. The guy that I tossed into the pool. Uh, what that reason is, of course, I'm not gonna tell you yet. But uh, let's see. Also something interesting to note, we rescued all the little sisters in the previous game, so that also makes it pretty weird that there are still little sisters in this city. And Sophia Lamb has probably restarted the, uh, the Adam business. But let's move on. And there we have a Rosie fixing up uh, the leak in the window here. Look at this guy. This is really cool. So this is the, I think this is one of the first guy time we actually see a big daddy on the ocean floor because that's what obvi obviously they were uh, built for because that's what the, those diving suits are for what was that did i just tumble off something okay that was weird you we can't carry any more of this item yes i know so let's take a look in the bathrooms it's kind of rude but uh fresh water it's an awful lot of fresh water in this game for some reason that wasn't in the previous game so Apparently the water became fresher in uh, five years, so more dollars and we can take her aspirins for some reason because we took a bit of damage from that one splicer who hit the big daddy and took away a third of his health. There we go, just took care of her. Because yeah, in, um, in stark contrast to the previous game we actually take more damage for some reason. Uh, the Big Daddy appears to be, um, how should I put it, weaker than before. In weeks. So, here again, the uh, introduction of uh, shocking splices and water to kill them. Well, quicker. So I'm going to quickly take that Eve hype over here. With a message for the people. Remember, you are not alone. Think of me not as leader, but as mother to the Rapture family. So there we have confirmation that Sophia Lamb is of course still alive, even after the 10 years that have passed. And uh, she is still watching. Uh, so let's take Return, because this is a really interesting one. I am back in Rapture after so many years. The little ones I rescued are grown up and think of me no more. After what I once did to them, it was a joy to be forgotten. But now, all around the world, children vanish by the sea, kidnapped. And so I return, in fear of what I already know. Someone is making new little ones, continuing my work, my sins. Even if I am to die for it, I must stop them. So Kerr, confirming what we already suggested a few minutes ago, Tannenbaum returned because uh, little sisters were disappearing on the sea uh, from boats and the like and she already n suspected that somebody in Rapture restarted the little sister business and abducted uh, little girls from uh, up top and uh, brought them to Rapture to become little sisters. Uh, let's see, we have a dead big daddy over here, a dead Rosie. 
let's take the rivets from him cuz we're gonna get our first weapons a rivet gun so this is a modified version of the weapon that the roses used in the excuse me the previous game and uh this thing actually shoots rivets not really not really precisely but at least it's something so there we go let's search this guy I'm gonna also show you a bit around the place because there's a lot of interesting uh, advertisements here. Because uh, apparently you can splice yourself to become more attractive to the ladies. Of course, because that's something uh, they would come up with immediately. And then we have this interesting picture. Um, most of these guys you actually know. So Rapture's Best and Brightest 1952. So from left to right we have Bridget Tenenbaum. And we have Sander Cohen, Andrew Ryan here in the middle. Su Chong, and then we have Sophia Lam over there, and this guy is actually someone who we only heard uh, of in uh, name in one of the audio diaries we found from Su Chong. This is uh, Jill Alexander, and uh, something tells me we're gonna come across this guy as well, since that's the only guy we haven't met yet, and he's on this picture. Uh, let's see what else we have. Limitless potential with plasmids, and then you need to slim down. Because, uh, of course, there's also a tonic to uh, slim your body down a bit. So, we have our first firearm. We can switch between these rather quickly if we want to. And, uh, yeah, rivets is our first... The rivet gun is our first very nice weapon. This is also a very cool... Uh, this is the, the start of another very nice storyline. So, let's pick this up. They called it Rapture. Barely made it down alive. But here it is. And it's real. Rapture. This is where that thing took my... My poor baby girl. From what I saw in the sub, most of the city's in ruins. But there were lights here and there. And shapes moving. Ugh, I'm rambling, scared, I guess. But maybe, if I find this Dr. Lamb I keep hearing over the PA, I'll find Cindy too. So there we have Mark Meltzer, uh, a father whose daughter has been kip kidnapped, kidnapped, kidnapped by uh, Sophia Lamb to turn into a little sister, as we already realized there were. Ah, there we go. So again, don't have auto aim on, so uh, that should make this a bit harder on me, and might just. Well, make this a bit more funny for you guys. Um, so we should go over there. Do not disturb the little sisters. And there we have. Uh, and now a word from Dr. Lamb. So uh, more propaganda from Lamb this time. And not from Andrew Ryan anymore. Because of course he's still dead. Together with Fontaine. Because we killed both of them in the previous game. Uh, first aid kit. Thank you very much. When hurt press. Ooh, that's an annoying button. I wonder if that happens automatically, because the arrow to the, the directional to the right is a bit of an annoying place to put that. It like circle more. So there's another little sister uh, just, just draining a body from Adam. But it's pretty dark in this place, so let's try and approach her. Hello, little girl. You want to be my little sister? Looks like she does. Damn. Big sister doesn't want you playing with me. Big sister doesn't want you playing with me. Hi. This is the big sister. Look at that. I really love her design. I'm gonna try and be careful here because she is pretty fast. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm almost dead. Is she gonna leave already? Jesus Christ, woman. There's a first aid kit over here. 
Where the hell did she go? Oh, she's up there. Okay, we're up. Is she, is, she, is she leaving or what is she doing? I think we did enough damage. Did she leave? Because we can't kill her just yet. I'm gonna I suppose she's dead, yeah, because uh, the, the lamp propaganda starts Remember, up again. Big sister is always watching. To steal Adam is to steal from the Rapture family. Your family. So aside from the big daddies, we now have a big sister guarding uh, the little sisters. And uh, that might be a problem, because she's a lot tougher than she looks and a lot tougher than the, the big daddies, even if I might say. Because we are a big daddy, but she kind of kicked our ass. Now let's take another look around. I pretty much spent everything. Uh, so let's reload this thing again. Oh, it was already reloaded, apparently. So yeah, if we uh, touch any of the... Excuse me, if we touch any of the little sisters, we're gonna get attacked by a big sister. Uh, let's see, I don't think there's anything else of interest in this place, so let's move on. And this looks like one ravaged hallway, the Demeter's Banquet Hall. With sparks coming out of everything, so first aid kit, welcome indeed, and there we have another... Sh oh, hi! There she is, she's still not gone. Let's take those, because that should heal us. Not a good idea to start following her, but we will be reborn in the womb of the ocean. A quote that we're going to see a lot uh, soon. So, Demeter's Banquet Hall. A very lovely, lovely big open area. Uh, indicating that this might be a combat arena. So, let's drop down. But she's not interested in a fight, because she's going to just take us out this way. Letting the water in. But of course, since we're now in a big daddy suit, we don't have anything to fear of the water. Um, so this is really cool, because now we can just walk around on the basically the ocean floor. Uh, another really cool thing about this scene is actually... Uh, well, everything is destroyed, the, the room transforms completely. But this is actually a nice touch. So this statue, at the, if we entered the room, was uh, two women bound by the hip. But now that the water has come splashing through, they're uh, broken open. Uh, kind of a, a nice way of... S okay. In that suit, even the ocean cannot harm you. This is good. But rapture is the death of many great men. Alone, you will not last long. You can still reach the train station. Find me there. So we need to head towards the Atlantic Express train station. And, uh, oh, look at that, an audio diary. Escape right, from Rapture. Diary. Last entry. Lizzie and I, we found a sphere. And we're going home. Ain't that right, baby? Next stop, topside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. It was you who saved us, Sammy. It was you, Button. I... What was that? What's that sound? She's seen us. It's Lamb. Torpedo! Ah, I'll try to... Ah! And then they clearly died, so their uh, bathysphere was torpedoed by uh, Sophia Lamb while they were trying to escape Rapture for good. Apparently there were still two uh, sane people in this place. Uh, not everybody turned into a splicer. So yeah, now we're walking on the ocean floor and there we have another little sister. But of course inside of this place. And another type of big daddy we haven't seen before. Look at this guy with a grenade launcher. Oh, <laughs> I think this guy was, uh, was distracted by us rather than the big daddy. And as you can see, this guy can uh, place mini turrets to attack uh, his foes. This is another one of the uh, Big Daddy types. Uh, this is actually a Big Daddy type that was originally planned for the uh, previous game. But was scrapped there and then reused for Bioshock 2. Uh, another interesting thing I wanted to mention. Mark Meltzer, the guy that we heard that uh, the first audio diary we found for, of, of him... 
that his daughter was kidnapped, that he was looking for her. That was actually supposed to be a uh, an NPC that we could encounter along the game. But that was actually changed later on as well to just include in the audio diaries. I think we can refill. We're probably maxed out in uh, our drill fuel. So yeah, but this is amazing. Kind of replaces the uh, original descent from uh, topside to downstairs. Downstairs. Down below to Rapture. Instead where we get uh, a nice walk along the ocean floor as an introductory scene. Because we didn't actually do all that much to get here. Um, I'm kind of looking around because there is actually something interesting you can find around here. Which would help us in the long run. So this... This kind of reminds you, and there we have a shark, kind of reminds you of the first shot we got from Rapture in uh, the previous game. So a uh, statue of Andrew Ryan here, completely fallen down. The squid from the original game also makes an experience, it just kind of missed it, but he, it passed by. And yeah, kind of reminds you of that first scene. Kind of blurry because of course we're underwater and not everything is as sharp as it should be. Uh, but yeah, now we need to jump down. Since we're in the water, it's gonna go a bit slower. There we go. I'm actually wondering if there's anything up top here. I don't think there is. Kind of feels like I'm walking on the moon right now. There's kind of a, this reduced gravity. Which is, of course, by the buoyancy underwater. And there we have Big Sister. Making another appearance. She's not attacking us just yet. Which is fine by me. Uh, is there actually nothing here? Interesting. There would be something. Because you can't find uh, the slugs that they uh, originally found the atom in. Uh, on the ocean floor. Which would give you give us a bit of uh, extra atom. But hey, let's drain this thing. Because this is a sort of airlock. So we're going to get uh, the water is drained out of this room. Allowing us to move further. Daddy's home. Trophy earned. Ah, Herr Delta. You arrive as the little one said you would. Come upstairs to the ticket booth, and I will offer what I know of you. So we arrive in Atlantic Express, and we see a splicer running away. But I'm gonna take a little break. So Tannenbaum, we need to meet her in the ticket booth of the, uh, the train station upstairs. And we're gonna meet her uh, in the next episode. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, don't forget to give the thought to subscribe to my channel. Because I'd really appreciate any support you guys can give me. So thanks again enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next video or series. Goodbye!